Good afternoon. In anticipation of the church's 150th anniversary, which is coming up in 2024, woohoo! I've been poking around in its historical documents and I've found some really interesting things. I've put together a sampling to share with you under the title of Everything Old is New Again or Some Things Never Change. I'm not done reviewing all our records and I haven't yet interviewed the people who've been in the church for 40 or 50 or 60 years, like the Peter Tills, the Placer Harriads, Sam Bowen, Claudia Divis, the Bowkers, the Millers, and others. So there'll be more as this goes on. But for today, I'm focusing on what Pilgrim has been through what it has done. We have always been actively involved in serving the larger community. Pilgrim was very active in the American Missionary Society in the early and mid-1900s, and at one point we supported up to 11 missionaries, five in China and others in Turkey, Iraq, Spain, J Japan, Arabia, and Alaska. The church was also active in internal missions, providing food, shelter, and other goods to people in need across the United States. In the mid-teens uh, to, uh, mid to 1940s, we sent money, clothing, and other goods to Tougaloo and Talladega colleges, historically black colleges in Alabama and Mississippi. We collected funds for refugees fleeing wars. We were active in collaboration that created the Oak Park Hunger Task Force that became the OPRF Food Pantry that has recently become Beyond Hunger. And we've been active in flood relief, building houses with Habitat for Humanity and other housing related projects. What is old is new again. We have also been known through our almost 150 years for feeding people. Our 1927 Pilgrim Church cookbook contained four donut recipes and of course our donut ministry launched in 1978. The church fed hundreds of people during the depression and continued a pattern of feeding people through the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, in the 1970s, the church founded an elder care stay-at-home ministry that fed up to 35 people a day, uh, and, and also uh, encouraged Oak Park to create its uh, Aging in Place Commission. In the 60s and 70s, we fed up to 700 students on the sidewalk with coffee and cookies, uh, and then later, we served them a smaller number lunch in our fellowship hall through our teen canteen. We also fed hundreds of hungry people during the 1970s and 80s in collaboration with the Austin Community Table. Some things never change. Pilgrim has also persistently supported racial understanding and justice. In addition to supporting HBCUs, the church held lectures and discussions about the issues facing African American and black citizens starting in 1911, and celebrated the 1920 civil rights legal victory of three African American congregational ministers who sued after being denied service at a cafeteria in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where they were in relation to a national uh, religious event. In 1938, the Reverend Judson Cross, president of Tougaloo College, preached here and in 1952, the then pastor of Pilgrim denounced racism and bigotry of all kinds. Last but not least, the church tied all three themes I've spoken about already, mission, feeding, and racial justice, together in its support for immigrants. We did this in a lot of ways, but the lengthiest and most substantial was our support for the Furman House in the Little Village area. Mr. and Mrs. Furman were early members of Pilgrim who helped to create the house, which provided housing, clothing, food, social services, job training, and education to men, women, and children from around the world, as well as to African Americans coming to Chicago from the South. Five Furman Community Centers, which are the next generation of the Furman Settlement House, exist in Chicago today, including this one in Cicero. So, just in case you think we've just been really, really good all the time, there are things that have stayed constant for the last almost 146 years. In 1911, we were given our first written reminder to get our articles into the messenger, the tidings predecessor, on time. And we've been reminded regularly to do that in the years since. And we have never been punctual. 
One Sunday in 1912, there were 30 people in the pews when church started, and 236 people came in late. We're also experienced with calling ministers during pandemics. As Reverend E.B. Allen came to Pilgrim in the middle of the 1918 flu epidemic, at a time when the Board of Health had closed public spaces and advised people to stay in the sun. That was their treatment du jour. Before Reverend Allen arrived, however, the Board of Health backtracked and allowed churches to stay open because, quote, having big, big air spaces and not being overcrowded, end quote, they were considered safe. We know better now. And now, a round of speed trivia. In April of 1896, the church lobbied for and won the stoppage of Sunday mail delivery in Oak Park. In 1918, the church dismissed its senior pastor, Reverend Noble Elder, because he was a pacifist, even though they had hired him knowing that in 1917. In 1939, they invited him back to preach for the 50th anniversary. In 1934 or 35, we started a Sunday school extension program in the area around Augusta and Kyler and ran a bus service back and forth between that area and the church twice a day on Sundays. In the 19-teens, ushers wore formal cutaway morning coats and flowers in their lapels. The church established a music committee in the 1889. In 1930, the choir had its own newsletter and proposed that the congregation join them in singing the Alleluia Chorus at Christmas. This was so radical that the council had to hear about it. In the 1940s and 50s, our bell tower had chimes that broadcast music around the neighborhood. As you can now see, Pilgrim has worked to benefit the larger community in a number of ways, and there are lasting institutions that have come out of it. Beyond Hunger, the Village's Aging in Place Commission, the Village's Recycling Program, which started with bins in our parking lot. The Village's Youth Services Department, which was kick-started in part by our teen canteen. And no Sunday mail. That's a pretty good foundation for the next 150 years. <laughs>